Asaomu Lakam Warmatulahi Wa Barakatu. Before proceeding to the video, we remind you to support us by subscribing, liking, commenting. Rasulullah mentioned that one of the harem months is the month of Julhijah. Behind its privileges as a sacred month, the month of Julhijah has its own history. In this article, Makes her a hura will review the history of the month of Julhijah. Apart from being a harem month, one of the features of the month of Julhijah is that it has the best days throughout the year. Namely the first ten days of the month of Julhijah. The Messenger of Allah said, There is no day when good deeds are more loved by Allah than these ten days. The companions asked, Is it better than Jihad fi Sabalila? He said, Yes, better than jihad fi sabalila, except for someone who goes out to wage jihad with his wealth and soul and then he never comes back. H.R. Bakari. The Origin of the Name of the Month of Julhijah. The scholars say, The name Julhijah consists of the word Zu, which means owner, and Al Hijia, which means Hajj. This name has been used since the Jahiliya era. At that time, the ancient Arab community had performed many pilgrimages, as taught by the Prophet Ibrahim. Hajj is one of the pillars of Islam. The pilgrimage is carried out in Mecca, with a series of certain rituals. Therefore, Muslims around the world flock to the city of Mecca every year to perform the pilgrimage. The implementation of the pilgrimage was also taught by the Rasulullah. Hajj is carried out in the months of Hajj Shawal, Jolkata. Up to the first ten days of Julhijah, the peak of the pilgrimage is on the ninth of Julhijah. When pilgrims perform Wukuf in Padang Arifa. History of Hajj in the month of Julhijah. The command Hajj was originally given to Prophet Ibrahim. However, the implementation of the pilgrimage experienced many changes over time. Because of that, Allah again sent down the command Hajj to Rasulullah Shallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah said, And call on people to perform Hajj. Surely they will come to you on foot or by riding a thin camel. They will come from all over the place. Qs. Al Hajj, 27. Allah ordered that the Hajj worship be carried out, as originally taught. Until then the Hajj began to be obligatory for Muslims in the year 6 Hijriya. There are opinions that say the year 3 or 5 Hijriya. The obligation to perform Hajj appears after the following verse was revealed. In it there are clear signs, among them the grave of Ibrahim. Whoever enters it the Baitullah will be safe. Carrying out the Hajj of the Baitullah is a human obligation towards Allah that is for those who are able to travel there. Whoever denies the obligation of Hajj, then verily Allah is the most rich of the world's Q.S. Ali Imran, 97. Rasulullah Shallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was only able to carry out the Hajj in 10 Hydria because Mecca was previously controlled by the Quraysh infidels. He did succeed in conquering Mecca in 8 Hydria. However, because there were other things that had to be completed. His pilgrimage was finally postponed until 10 Hydria, exactly three months before he died. This is the reason why the pilgrimage performed by Rasulullah Shallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is called Hajwada, or Farewell Pilgrimage. Other events in the history of the month of Julhijah. 1. Prophet Ibrahim reflects on the contents of his dreams. Provisions for Hajj cannot be separated from the historical events experienced by Prophet Ibrahim. On the 8th of the month of Julhijah, he received a revelation to slaughter his favorite son. The revelation that was present in this dream made him doubt. He was worried it was a whisper of the devil. This is where the term Tarwiyah day. For the 8th of Julhijah comes from, that is, a day of thinking or contemplating. But, there is also an opinion 
that says the term Pariya Day comes from the word Erdawa, Yertawi, that is, drink a lot. Because many people bring water or drink as provisions for the pilgrimage on Tarwiya Day, the Prophet Ibrahim decided to slaughter his son. After the ninth night, finally, the Prophet Ibrahim was sure that his dream was indeed an order from Allah. He then told Ismail, and Ismail obeyed with great piety. Seeing the piety of his servants, Allah replaced Ismail with a slaughtered animal from heaven when the Prophet Ibrahim did the slaughter. This event makes the tenth of Julhijah the Eid al -Adha. then followed by Tasirik Day until the thirteenth of Julhijah. 3. The Aqaba Agreement in the month of Julhijah. In the month of Julhijah, the Aqaba Agreement occurred which involved the Aus and Khazraj people with the Rasulullah Shalallahu Alaihi Wasallam. On the hill of Aqaba, they promised to help the preaching of the Rasulullah Shalallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Yathrib Medina. At that time, after the high season where many people came to Mecca, Rasulullah met several tribes to preach Islam. But many refused. Until then he met six people from the Khazraj people from Yathrib. After meeting on Aqaba Hill, they accepted Islam and were going to preach it at Yathrib. This time it was not only attended by the Khazraj, but there were also people from the Aus from Yathrib as well. This event occurred in the twelfth year of prophethood, or two years before the migration of the Prophet Muhammad to Yathrib Medina. Tenjul Hijik can also be called the big day of Eid al adha where today coincides with everyone performing the pilgrimage in Mecca, and we are sunnah to perform the Eid al adha worship. And on this day, also Muslims perform the slaughter of sacrificial animals. Eid al adha is held every tenth of Jul Hijjah. Usually, on this holiday Muslims carry out sacrifices or slaughter livestock, such as cows, goats and sheep. The sacrifice of the sacrificial animal is carried out after the Eid al adha prayer. Eid al adha can also be referred to as the Feast of Hajj or Eid al Kurban. The naming is because on that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the opportunity to get closer to Him. Muslims who have not been able to perform the pilgrimage are given the opportunity to sacrifice by slaughtering sacrificial animals as a symbol of piety. To Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. The history of the celebration of Eid al Adha is based on the example of Prophet Ibrahim. At that time, he was ordered to place his wife Hayyar with Prophet Ismail, his son who was still breastfeeding. They were placed in a valley that was barren, arid, and uninhabited. Prophet Ibrahim himself did not know what the true intention of Allah's commandment was. But, both Prophet Ibrahim and his wife accepted the order with sincerity and trust. This event is even enshrined in the letter of Ibrahim verse 37, along with the sound of the verse. رَبَّنَا إِنِّي أَسْكَنْتُ مِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ بِوَادٍ غَيْرِ ذِي زَرْعٍ عِنْدَ بَيْتِكَ الْمُحَرَّمِ رَبَّنَا لِيُقِيمْ وَالصَّلَاةَ فَاجْعَلْ أَفْئِدَةً مِنَ النَّاسِ تَهْوِي إِلَيْهِمْ وَارْزُقْهُمْ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَشْكُرُونَ Meaning, Ya Allah, in fact I have placed some of my descendants in a valley that does not have plants near your house by Tullo, which is glorified. O our Lord such so that they establish prayer. So make the Gaudi as humans tend to them, and give them sustenance from fruits, hopefully they will be grateful. As told by Ibn Abbas, when Sidi Hayya ran out of drinking water so she could not breastfeed Prophet Ismail, she looked for water while jogging Sa'i between the hills of Shafa and Marwa seven times. Suddenly Allah sent the angel Jibril to make the Zamzam spring after which the Prophet Ismail and Sidi Hayyar obtained the source of life. Eid al adha is also known as Eid al-Nar, which means the Feast of Slaughter.
This was the most severe test that befell Prophet Ibrahim. But, because he was patient and steadfast in facing the test, Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him an honor as Allah's lover, or commonly called Khalilullah. After Prophet Ibrahim carried the title, Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed the angels to test the faith and piety of Prophet Ibrahim. Starting from wealth, the family did not make Prophet Ibrahim negligent from Allah's commands. Ibn Katsir in the interpretation of al Quran al Adzim said, Prophet Ibrahim's statement that he would sacrifice his son if God wanted it was then used as a test material. Allah tested Prophet Ibrahim's faith through his dreams. In the dream, he was ordered to sacrifice his son, Prophet Ismail, who was seven years old at that time. Prophet Ibrahim was ordered to sacrifice Prophet Ismail with his own hands. This event is stated in the letter as Safat verse 102. قال يا بني إني أرى في المنام أني أذبحك فانظر ماذا ترى قال يا أبت فعل ما تؤمر ستجدني إن شاء الله من الصابرين. Meaning, Ibrahim said, O oh my son, in fact I saw in a dream that I slaughtered you so think about what you think. Ismail reply, O oh my father, do what you are commanded. God willing, you will find me among those who are patient. When the two of them were ready to carry out God's command, the devil came and said, Ibrahim, what kind of parent are you going to say? Just slaughter your child with various kinds of seduction and persuasion. Satan seduced the prophet Abraham. Then, Allah's lover immediately took a stone and threw it, while saying, Bismillahi Allah Akbar. Therefore, now pilgrims throw stones, while saying, Bismillahi Allah Akbar, according to what Prophet Ibrahim said at that time. Then, when Prophet Ibrahim had not yet swung the knife at Prophet Ismail's neck, he immediately let go of the ropes and hands. The intention is so that there is no impression in history that the Prophet Ismail was forced and demanded by his father. After Prophet Ibrahim had made up his mind and the knife was about to be moved, Suddenly Allah called out with his word, ordering him to stop what he was doing. Allah has blessed their tawakal and replaced a goat as a sacrifice. The story is contained in the letter as Safat verses 107-110, which reads, Meaning, and we ransomed the child with a large sacrifice. Meaning, we immortalize for Ibrahim good praise among those who came later. Salamun ala Ibrahim. Meaning, that this prosperity they be bestowed upon the Prophet Ibrahim. Meaning, thus we reward those who do good. The greatest sacrifice of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. In the history of mankind made him a great prophet and messenger too. From this history, it can be seen that the piety of a servant to his Lord is very noble. That is the history of Ayd al-Adha which falls on Tanjul Hijjah, from the story of the example of Prophet Ibrahim. Hopefully this story can add to our faith. That's all of our summary in this video. Hopefully, it can add to your insight. Don't forget to continue to support this channel by subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.